Let the Delphine twinkle. <laughs> so I, on behalf of all of us who attended Northeastern over the years, it gives me great pleasure in welcoming each and everyone here this afternoon to this little get together. Long overdue. But I don't want to steal the show, so I will want to call on Maura, who was the head prefect girl. So Maura, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Those who don't know me, my name is Maura Kusilal. I attended Northeastern as one of the first, one of the pioneer students. First of all, let me welcome everybody, right? I'm giving my own welcome to all our past and former teachers and students who were there with me and who came after me or who were within the time period. I was a student there, I 61 to 66. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I, I'm, I am one of the, the oldest students here today. Right, I'm 75 years old, I'll be 76 soon, right? <laughs> well, they asked me to give you a welcome and to give you a little history of the, the school and I'm doing that with pleasure. Now, Northeastern started off, first of all, Mr. Lalto was specially selected by Dr. Eric Williams to be the principal of that school. He was handpicked by Dr. Eric Williams. So Mr. Lalto used to visit the school before it was really open because he wanted certain things, you know, put in the school. And Dr. Eric Williams, during Mr. Lalto's tenure there, he stayed there from 1961 to 64. Dr. Eric Williams used to visit the school incognito and we were given books. We had three books. And the books had a label inside it. And Dr. Eric Williams used to come into the classroom and we had locker desks. And he asked you to open your desk and you want to see the condition the books were being kept in. Right? Many times he visited us. And then Mr. Lalto wanted an assembly hall, one of the buildings down in the back. And he couldn't get chairs for it. So Dr. Um, Mr. Lalto organized an assembly and he invited the Minister of Education and so on to come. And he kept the assembly at two o'clock in the evening when the sun was the hottest. <laughs> and eight students fainted. Even Dr. Eric Williams went and helped pick up students. And next day, two truckloads of chairs came. <laughs> so he was a strategist, right? Then Mr. Lalto had the autonomy to hire his staff. Because he taught at QRC. He was an English master in QRC before he came to Sangre Grande. So he hired Ian Jones, Michael Gray, Carl Tiedo, and Arnim Paris. And he met them and he said, um, I need a teacher of the school. I'm hiring you. And they all came up to Mr. Lalto in his Pontiac every day. And he took them back down to Port of Spain. So that, and these young men were just about five or six years older than us. And we girls, you know, some of these girls had crushes on these teachers. Right? And these, these young men never called us by our first names because they didn't want to get too familiar with us. So they still call them Miss Kusilal, Miss James, Miss Toyasu, Mr. Ali. Mr. Khan and so on. That is how they addressed us, right? So it's Carl Tiedo, who taught Spanish. Ian Jones taught Spanish too. Michael Gray taught English. And, um, and in Paris, he taught French, right? So those are our four young members of staff. But the school started with Mr. Adams, Roma Acqui, um, Mr. Eber Jones, who taught IA. Um, Iris Roach taught home ec. She came from Tobago. And during this, during, um, but we didn't start home ec right away. So during the holidays, some of the students, including myself, used to come out and help paint the classrooms and take out all the wares and so on that was in the storeroom 
and wash them and place them in the um, cupboards and Miss Roach used to get these decals to stick on the, the doors of the cupboards and so on. So we, the first students, had this sense of belonging. But we had to clean the school. We didn't have a cleaner. We had to clean the school. So we had this sense of belonging. And we had students coming from far as Guayagayari, Toko, Arima, right? Because the aim of Dr. Eric Williams was to have a dormitory. One of the buildings on in the back was to be a dorm, but that never materialized. And we, one of the members of staff at that time, I knew her in primary school. Her name was Margaret Peer. And she had a habit in primary school, when you reach in the assembly late for morning devotion, she said, twist your ears, right? But she never twisted mine. But when she came to note and I saw her, I said, if I twist my ears, they are going to bite you, right? <laughs> so she never came around me <laughs> to twist my ears. But Mr. Laltu had a, a, a specialty, right? right where we have the part of the assembly hall and the library was the lawn. And he had a fountain. And in that fountain, he had a map of Trinidad and Tobago, and that was his pride and joy. And um, Alexander, who we favoritely called Bobby Ned, <laughs> used to bring grass from El Uposo and plant it there. So the lawn was really lush and green. And the first year, a certain student who was sitting here <laughs> came to school and she was walking on the lawn. I didn't remember the story, but she reminded me of it. And I called her and I told her, um, you cannot walk on the lawn. So she started jiggling off this time and she said, is your lawn? I said, yeah. <laughs> And I took her to Mr. Laltu. But Mr. Laltu said, anybody walking on that lawn has to come to the office. And as a dutiful and obedient head girl, yes. I took her to him and he gave her a few canes. <laughs> <laughs> and would you believe, I didn't remember this. But, yeah, but in the first reunion, she said, Morocco Silale, no, you are the, you, the first I come in the school, you make me get licks. I said, me? She said, yes, then she reminded me of the story. I said, come, son, girl, I'm so sorry you carry this pain. For 55 years, you carry this pain. Right? <laughs> so, I mean, those were some of our, one, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a wonderful time, but as a head girl, no, we really had a head boy whose name was Carl St. Rose right. and myself. So Mr. Lalto, I was walking past his office because his office was in the main building in front and he had windows there. So when I pass, he said, Kusi Lal, come in here, I want to talk to you. So when I go in, he said, I'm appointing you the head girl. I said, did you discuss it to the staff? He said, he said, I'm, an, I, he said, I'm autocratic. I, I have no time with that. I have been observing you and you have leadership qualities and you are going to be the head girl and don't disappoint me. <laughs> All right, I said, okay, sir. So... I assumed my role, and he had Carl as a head boy, and after three months, he called us back in the office, and he told Carl he's not functioning as a head boy should function, so he's removing him as the head boy, and he said, you'll be the head prefect. Yes. So my role was doubled up. And I can tell you, the students we had in Northeastern, were very good students. Some of them told me they were afraid of me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, maybe. <laughs> and then Mr. Lato gave me permission to run a, a lunchtime detention. <laughs> so when you are Miss B. A. and we had school prefects and we had class prefects. So the school, school prefects and myself used to line the corridor from the assembly to the classroom. Anybody stepped out of line, was pulled out, and you had to join the lunchtime detention. You had 15 minutes to eat your lunch, and you had to be in detention, right? Um, there's a guy with a hardware in um, Pahari named Mikey. He, he, t he, he, he tell me, he say, more girl up to now, I self read you. <laughs> I, I, say, I say, why? He say, girl. <laughs> I say, I say, boy, 
All of us are adults or big men and women. Why are you still afraid of me? Say, nah, Gail. I have some real great respect for you, right? <laughs> so I guess it's my upbringing. I, I grew up with four brothers, had no sisters. And as a girl, I had to defend myself because no boys like to take advantage of you. And so I defended myself physically and in writing. All right, I still write today. When things bother me, I will write in newspaper. I will send letters to um, whoever it is. I always look for the fine print and use somebody from the fine print. Because my grandfather, he was a bartender. He used to mix drinks and so, but he was a wise old man. And he always tell me, never deal with the small fry. Always go to the top. Because the small fry still have to go to the top. So I always live by that. I always go to the top, right? And since I was in Northeastern, I always liked writing because Mr. Ramcharan, Kenneth Ramcharan, he was an English teacher. And he gave us an exercise in 1962 to write a letter telling a young girl in Australia about our country, our culture, and so on. It was an English exercise. And he chose, he said he would choose the best letter to send to the young girl. And whoever gets the reply would be the letter he sent. And I got the reply from the young girl in Australia. But then I switched to her elder sister because she was two years younger than me. And the sister was my age. So we started corresponding by a letter forms. I don't know if some of you all know what a letter forms are. And in those days, there was no direct dialing. You had to call through the operator. So once a year, we will talk on the phone. And when she got married, I said I had to send her a telegram to Textel. We didn't have like cell phones and all that. And when I retired, I decided to write it. Well, we keep writing each other. We were writing each other already for 39 years. And I said I have to go to Australia free. <laughs> so I wrote to BB. And no, first I went. I I so I did um. A, I just finished a computer course in John D. Right when I bought a computer, I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do. So I went to John D. and I did a, a course in desktop publishing. A young boy asked me, what do we need? I said, I'm giving you a challenge. At the end of the, uh, the exam, beat me in the exam. So at the end of the exam, I beat him in the exam, right? So and that's how I learned to use a computer. So I used my skills, and I did Illustrator and all that in the course. So I used my skills and I sent a, a letter to Newsday, Guardian, and Express. So Express came home and interviewed me, but Newsday invited me to come for an interview, and Newsday carried the story. And then I wrote to BB, and out of the blue in August of um, 1999, no, 2000, sorry, Mr. Alion called me and he said, we are writing you into BB's history you will be getting a free trip to Australia, right? So I lie down in my bed and start to ball and kick up my foot. And I said, oh, I'm going to Australia, I'm going to Australia. And by December, everything was organized. And I left on the 5th of January, 2001. BB paid my fare from Trinidad to Miami. And when I got to Miami, United Airlines took over. But the, the Friday before I left, the, we had a news con a press conference in Sunjet House on Edward Street, and a, a lady named Susan McGilvery came down from Canada by private jet to present me my tickets. Right? And I was written into BB's um, Caribbean Beat book. And I was on their video for months on the airline. And all this is because of the teaching skills of Mr. Ramcharan. Right? That is where it, it generated from. And I, when I got to, to Miami, I was made an honorary member of the Red Carpet Club and upgraded to first class and flew to, and flew to Sydney. And in Sydney, now I, well, Sydney is an international airport. You can go and use a shower and bathe and whatever because the flight time from LA to Sydney is 13 hours and 55 minutes, crossing international date line and all that. And that was memorable for me because I'm a geography student. And when I got to Sydney, I went and I, sh my, uh, uh, I have a cousin living in Perth, a doctor, and he told me, make sure I have a change of clothes and so on. And I did all that. 
and then I boarded a internal flight now to Perth. Right? And when I got there, my pen pal didn't make me what I made a word. But before that, a little dog come and jump on my chest. So I say, mash dog. Right? <laughs> so a, Korea, a Korean woman come in a fully arm, she said, um, I say, I don't do drugs, you know. She say, he's not a drug dog, he's a fruit dog. Right? She say, he can smell a apple seven days after you take it out of your handbag. Right? I say, what? So, she say, I have a plane in your handbag. I say, I had one and I used it last night on the plane. She say, well, he can smell it seven days after. <laughs> and then I saw my pen pal and I say, Maureen. And uh, well, we hugged and whatever. And I spent a month there. We we kept emailing me, messaging me, finding out how things were going, and I can say I was well treated and everything, and it was a wonderful month, went to the Outback, so the Aborigines and so on. So it was a real, and that came because of the letter, the exercise given by Mr. Ramcharan in Northeastern College, right? We had, um, so now the first student who was registered there, he can make it today, Sheriff Ali, he, he's not well. So by the 11th of May, 1961, Northeastern was a five-year school. So if it wasn't for our parents, Northeastern might have well been like a junior second at the time, with three years. So we have to be grateful to our parents for that. Now we had um, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Nanku, Mr. Alexander, and Mr. Andal. So they were the support staff. I don't you remember Mr. Anthony was everything. Right, he dressed in khaki. Right, since they call him khaki Jesus, but he he had a, a love for the school. Right, he had this love for the school, and he he's the one we used to be with when we clean in the school and all that. Right, um, we had clubs, photography club. Mr. Jones we used to carry us all about to take pictures. In those days, was a little box camera, black and white. The, life, the literary and debating club was Mr. Ramcharan, the North, Northeast Sun. Always, we used to enter debates with QRC and other schools, and we used to lick them up. We had a music society. We had a naturalist club. That is Mr. Lacan and Ms. Acri, they were our science teachers. Volleyball was Mr. Ramcharan. Lawn tennis was Mr. Ram Gulam. Netball was Mrs. Roach, and table tennis was by most of the teachers and students. Now, Mr. Rangulam, Mr. Lalto had put him in charge of the lawn tennis. Mr. Lalto told him that students have to have three days on the, on the court and teachers two days. But when these students go, on the days they're supposed to go, Mr. Rangulam, they are not giving us a chance. So I reported him to Mr. Lalto. <laughs> And one day, I don't know if you all remember, the library used to be just before the geography room, a little room. So I, I, as I was passing by the library, he called out to me. And he said, why? you went and report me? I said, well, you, you look for that, right? He said, well, why didn't come and talk to me? I said, I want to get justice, right? So I went to the head. I said, my grandfather tell me, go, let's go to the head, man, right? So he said, well, I don't want you in my class again. I said, in any case, your class is not interesting. I just drop asleep in your literature class. <laughs> so he, he moved me out of the literature class, right? But I, 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 I didn't bother with that. And then, in 1964, Mr. Lalto wanted 28 of us to write the Cambridge GC. So 28 of us wrote the Cambridge GC in Form 4. Some people, one person failed completely, about 17 people got part certificates, and I think about six, seven or eight got full certificates. So the people who had part certificates had a year again to repeat. Now, within that time, Mr. Lalto left, and Ms. Dial, it was a tussle for the principal post. And Ms. Sukraji Dial told us, we cannot come back. So I asked her if she can count, right? Because 61 and 4 is 65, 65, 61 and 5 is 66. So I said, we still have a year here and we are not leaving. Well, to be honest, we never that group never graduated from the school, right? 
She never gave us a form teacher. She never gave us a classroom. We never got a timetable. We had to ask teachers in the form five classes if we could sit in. And they said, yes, they will correct our work. Mr. Jones Haru opted to be our form teacher and we were sitting in a room with a table, tennis table as our table. We sat around the table, tennis table. Well, she signed us up to write the exams and all of us passed. All of, I got six subjects, some got five and whatever. When we came to get our certificates now, she refused to give us our certificates. So I said, Miss DL, you really want me to go to the Minister of Education to you know, right? I said, we're coming back here next week. You and Mr. Jones, that is Eva Jones, I, the IA teacher. I said, see, next week I'll be coming back here for those certificates, the 17 of us. And make sure you put them in brown envelopes for us, please. <laughs> and do you know, she had it ready. <laughs> But this is a little digression with Ms. Dial. So when I graduated, when I entered teaching, and then eventually I entered the junior sec program, and the first school they sent me to was Five Rivers Junior Sec. And, and when I got there, who I could meet? So graduated Dial as the principal. I said, gosh, Ms. Dial, if I know it was you, I'd never come here. She said, my name is not Mrs. Dial, my name is Mrs. Maraj. I said, I could tell you my name is Mrs. Lucas, right? I said, well, I am Maura Kutsila. I said, I want to talk to you first. She said, come in my office. I said, I want to talk to you before you talk to me. I said, I am no longer Maura Kutsila, the student. I'm now a woman, you're equal. You might have your PhD or whatever behind your name. All I have is my teacher's diploma. And we are here for one common good, to educate these children. But I'm telling you, if you come up in room 18, which is the social studies room, to harass me, I'll embarrass you. So don't make that mistake. Well, unbelievably, she and I became good friends for the one year I spent there. All right, I told her to get off my back, because in Northeastern, for the year that we, the extra, not the extra year, but the year that was over here, she gave me a very hard time, right? And when graduation came, they never invited the 17 of us to graduate. So we never graduated, they could see. Right? One day I went to the library and I saw the, the, the prize that was mine. It was now a book on the bookshelf with my name still in it. Right? So, but I have very good thoughts about Northeastern. Then in 1962, under Mr. Lalto, the name changed from Sandy Grandy Government Sec to Northeastern College. And he drew up his own logo, which was in Latin, and his, um, which means the pleasant seat of sweet linen. And the Latin reads, um, Studiorum Sedes Dulcium Amoina. And there's a joke about Mr. Lalto and me and the Latin, you know? From his office, there was a connecting door to the dining hall, where students, had three classes, there was a dining hall, you had to come down there. And the cafeteria was right there, they serve you on the inside or the outside. And Lalto had a connecting door from his office into the dining hall. So our students were laughing and talking and so on. And then you hear that key turning, you look, everybody straighten up and do as if you're working hard. So I pulled my Latin book, man. And I, I can read in Latin. And Mr. Lalto is, likes to walk like this, you know, with his hand behind his back. He's coming up to me when I look and see my Latin book upside down. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't, I couldn't flip it around. I had to leave it so. But as he passed by me now, bend over my head. He said, Kusila, I didn't know you were a genius. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Kusila, I didn't know you were a genius. I, I, I just keep a straight face and I still read it. <laughs> So when Lalto opened his door to go back in his office, I see him laughing, eh? I see him smiling, I see him good laughing at me. He wrote a book about Northeastern Foundation years, and he put that in his book. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so the, when I read that, I was always laugh, yes, I say, Mr. Lalto is something else, yes? So I think I've said enough. Anybody want to ask any questions? <laughs> I want to say something.
Sure. After hearing all that, yeah. I still can't understand how you said it. Because we have the same person. <laughs> 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 but, um, Naughty Son, I, I think they're going through some changes right now, right? And then the attitude of teachers. Well, at one time, I had two grandsons going there. And the teachers used to get fed up with me. Because I told them to keep a roll of the teachers who come to class, right? Because those teachers not pulling their weight. Because I, I, I had an argument with a teacher on Facebook. I told her, no, this has three groups of teachers. One, I said to work hard, some who sit on the fence, and some who will just come, sign the register, and disappear. Right? So I say each of all that to know what group all in. Because it's the hardest working group was the smallest group. And she started arguing with me on Facebook and eventually she um, con conceded that you know I was right. And one teacher to one of my grandsons that um your grandmother tell her to keep her role. My grandson didn't answer her. So he came home and he told me, I said, well next step will be victimization. And I went and I told them, I said, if I get any whiff of optimization of my grandchildren here, I'm going to bring in TV6 for all of you. And let TV6 know what all they're really doing in the school. So they left them alone, right? And so I used to go, but I don't have any grandchildren going there again. So, I mean, I would like North Eastern to be better, right? Because it was really a top ranking school. Right, and you know, rated with people like QRC and St. Mary's and so on. Right, there's one was, at that time it was the best school in the northeastern counties. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, I think I've said enough. What? I should have known it. <laughs> well, good afternoon. I guess by now you all know my name, seeing that I'm a celebrity. <laughs> um, I was fortunate to be among the second batch of students who attended Northeastern College. Went there in 62, I think it was. And, um, you know, the school was still young, green. I remember the school uniform, blue shirt and a slate gray pants. In those days, in those days, Students, me and students were allowed to wear long pants. <laughs> so, so we all had short pants. <laughs> we all had short pants coming to school. And um, it was a new experience for us, a very, very new experience, because secondary school was something, um, you know, in San Granite that you could have dreamt of. You could have only, <laughs> only dream of. Because you would hear about QRC and the schools in town and what and what, of course, you know about about decent school and so on, but Northeastern was really a huge milestone um, in the journey for education in San Grande. And then we were, we were young students and we also had very young teachers who many of us looked up to as role models. Role models, they taught us, you know, they were very friendly, very friendly with us and, you know, Many of them had come out of, out of um, A-levels and we were, were teachers there. So we were close with them. Some of them played football with us, sports with us, you know, and the atmosphere in the school was what, 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 um, what was very, very friendly and what you could deal with. Of course, you still had moral to deal with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mora, Mora was like was like another teacher. Right? You know, you would have levels of, of authority, right? More bridged <laughs> that gap. You know, and everybody, everybody either had a healthy respect, um, um, bordering on fear for, for, for Mora Kusila, you know, you know. But we lived through it, and the school, Northeastern, had a great part in shaping my personality and making me who I turned out to be eventually. Um, I, I have been around a bit. I ended up moving eventually from the classroom 
to the staff room. Because um, after I did my O-levels in Northeastern, I went and did E's at QRC. And when, I came, when that was finished, Mrs. Ms. Dial was still the principal, and she grabbed me. <laughs> grabbed me and put me to teach, even before the ministry gave me an appointment. <laughs> you know. So I got in the classroom there, and as I tell students, it was a, a baptism of fire. As a student, getting, getting into the classroom. One of the memorable things was that I had a younger sister, Marcia, who was a student there while I was teaching. And I don't know if by design or by accident, I got to be there for master. Master will not call me Mr. Caesar. <laughs> because at home she called him Peter, <laughs> right? I had the whole class called him Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> so so I, had to find a, I had to find a way to deal with that, to deal with that and get my job done, <laughs> you know, because, because they saw me as, um, as their friend, I mean, I, I was a few years older than them. I was a few older than them, and my sister is in the class, so, but that's, that's, that's another story. But I did deal with it, and um, my years at Northeastern were, were very, very memorable. Because when I got there, I remember I met the students who had taught me. I mean, I'm teachers who had taught me. And I remember Mr. Carr, Clive Carr, taking me and putting me to sit down and giving me pointers as to how to plan a lesson, class control, and what to do when I get in the class and, st and, and stuff like that. And um, there were other teachers there who, who, who gave me pointers, you know, and helped me and so on. And those, there was at least, there's, there's at least one with whom, whom I am still, is like a lifelong friend. <laughs> that's uh, that's Rudvin Smith. I tried, I tried to get him to be here today, but he is not, he is not exactly in the best of health, right? And um, we are still friends. And, and you know, <laughs> you know he, was, he was a mentor. <laughs> he was a mentor to, to, to take us through, that, through those teen years into, into, um, into, into growing up. So, Northeastern for me has been more than um, an alma mater. You know, it has, done, it has done things for me and developed me and been... Um, a memorable and chief institution in my growing up in um, in in, in San Grande. So there isn't much more there isn't much more that, that, that I want to say. I am happy to be here and I'm happy to go through this and I remember stories. I remember some stories. <laughs> I can't remember who the person was. Was breaking class or something come out of the class. So they come out of the class and he said the class so Mr. Lalto me ask where are you going? He says so I'm going back <laughs> <laughs> you know, and 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 and, and the, the thing is, the thing is, don't don't do anything wrong to go into the office to have a to cane you. I was I was told about this. I uh, I, I I didn't see it. I think it was 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 the late Jackie George who told me this, that Mr. Lalto hold held somebody and put a cane in him. How many person? Ran out of a boy, when he ran out of the office, he, he went in a pipe and put the ring in the pipe and opened up in the sink and opened the pipe. You know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but 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 all in all, um Northeastern, Northeastern was a good I mean is a good school. I'm sorry to hear that it's it's it's, it's going through um, you know, questionable times now. And I still remember um, all of all of our, uh, my teachers who were there, Mr. Jun Saru who would give us lessons in handwriting. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it teaches, it teaches, it teaches, so that we could write properly, form your letters and what and what and what. And then, um, <laughs> and then I remember, <laughs> I remember Miss Haynes. <laughs> Miss Haynes, yes, 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 yes. Miss Haynes, <laughs> Miss Haynes, <laughs> maybe get a look in. <laughs> For what I considered nothing. In those days, in those days, I used to go home um, lunchtime for lunch. We, 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 uh, we lived in the Scrabble Family School, so I went home for lunch. So when I, by the time I came back, well, at lunchtime too, we would, the, the classes would assemble and line up in the courtyard before you go to your classroom. So I came back late that day, but apparently the, 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 the students in my class were misbehaving. 
So Miss Hayes give you a whole class of detention. So I wasn't there. So as far as I concerned, I have no detention. <laughs> so the evening I went home. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Next day, Miss Hayes grabbed me and came to the office. <laughs> came to the office. He broke the detention. <laughs> so I said, well, I didn't break any detention. So they sent me home for my father. <laughs> so I go home. As far as my father is concerned, the teacher is always right. Eh? So he came home. When we came back, I, I, I came up with Mr. Lal to hold the principal. Tell him so, 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 so. The boy did so and so, and the boy was insolent and rude. And if he, he, if he can't beat him, he'll have to suspend him. The father said, beat him. <laughs> so, so, so I got I got all the finest cuttings I got I, I ever got, you know what I mean? In in the office. Of course, you know, after that I hated Miss Hayes then. <laughs> you know, but but it was um the the, the, the noticing experience was good. And um, to this date, I was speaking to some ex students uh, not so long ago, and I told them as far as I concern, I've been to schools, you know, <laughs> abroad, uh, and, here. and I tell them, for me, Northeastern is the best school in the world. The experience it gave me, the experience it gave me in growing up, I wouldn't have gotten that anywhere else, right? And I, like I said, it played a major part in making me who, who, who I am, and I am happy to see so many of us gathered here. I was hoping there'd be more, but, you know, you are part and parcel of a major institution in Trinidad and Tobago, if not the world. Thank you.